Hey traders, this is Ron Ada at Market Tamer. Happy Wednesday. Hope you had a great day. As always, nothing in this presentation shall constitute a recommendation to buy or sell any security. Trading stocks and options involves risk and specific financial issues should always be addressed with your financial advisor. All right, kick off here with the SPY, SPY ETF. Finished unchanged on the day. We did dip down pretty good. We were down over uh, 20 S&P points at one point. Coming back up, finishing unchanged. The short-term direction is still bullish. Short-term meaning five days out. As this blue line is the five day exponential moving average. If we're above it, it's bullish. Below it, it's bearish. The target remains these two moving averages. The red line, the 20 day EMA. The orange line, 50 day SMA. That's the big institutional moving average. Those are the upside targets. So there's not a whole lot of room in the short term to the upside. But if we close above the 50 day, that is then bullish. And then we go back up and challenge the previous all time highs. If we would roll over, just like I've been saying, watch that 200-day SMA in purple. That is a major institutional moving average. We get below that, it could open up another um, bout of selling, especially if we close below below from 10.11. All right, let's take a look at the Dow. Dropped just over a third of a percent, but it still did stay above the five-day EMA in blue, and the 200-day is holding. Similar story, but what's nice about the Dow the 50-day in orange and the 20-day in red are both here at 260. A simple close above both then opens up a clear path right up to here. So it's very easy to see on the chart, right back up to the all-time highs. You know, that would be the target. However, if we get below the five-day, we go right back down to the lows in the 200-day. Then we break the 200-day in purple. Well, that's a whole other ball game, and we'll address that when we get there. Then looking at the cues. They finished up a whopping seven cents. They did dip below the five day, but just a little bit, and they're still stuck here below the 20. So the cues in the SPY do sort of look the most similar. If the cues can get above both these moving averages, 50 day in orange, 20 day in red, then we come back up here to challenge those highs. Now, the one stock I wanted to talk to you guys about was Netflix from Monday night. Netflix had earnings last night after the bell and the stock ended up finishing higher today by 18 points. So here's what we're gonna do. If I go analyze, and I go back to the 15th, which was Monday, and we look at those weekly options, the stock was at 333. If we just consider what would be an at the money call and put, otherwise known as a strangle, a straddle is different strikes on the call and put side. This is a straddle, calls and puts same size. Let me go 335, what are we looking at? About 33 bucks, 1570 and 1730. Just remember that. 335 and we're looking at about $33. Well, if I go to today's option prices, the 335 is now worth at the bid, if we were to close it, 29.60 and 40 cents. So it's basically worth a combination of 30. So we had this big move, but net, we're actually down 10% in the trade. That's why we needed a big move to see a return of at least that 30 some dollars. Now it gets even more interesting. If I go back to change it here to now yesterday the stock finished at 346 it was already up 13 dollars right so if you actually go from monday we were up 13 up 18 we're up 31 dollars right and you're still down 10 percent on monday's prices at the end of the day but if i go just to yesterday again the 16th stock at 346 let's say we do let's just round it off and say we do a 345 so it's easier to follow. That's gonna cost us 17 plus 19. That's 36 bucks. Yeah, we might be able to get it down to 34 or 35. Let's say we get it down to 35 bucks. We could probably do some bid-ask uh, bid prices there. $35. Ready? If I go to today's price, you're looking at 20 and a buck, 21 bucks. You're gonna go from 35 to about 21.50. That is a big drop in capital, 30, 40%, depending where you got filled on loss, even with the stock jumping $18. Why? Volatility crush, volatility decay. This is why it's really important to practice this in a paper trading account and then see what happens when the stock does move it. And you would say, wait, the stock jumped 18 bucks just versus yesterday. Yeah, the problem is the cost was $35, $36. Now it's worth a whopping 21. Massive crash in the unknown, therefore the premiums drop like a rock. Okay, so I hope that was helpful. There's a lot of other companies reporting earnings later this week and next week, great opportunity to try these type of strategies, whether it's on Google, Amazon, 
um, NVIDIA next month, Boeing maybe later this week, etc. Okay, let's jump to a couple others I want to look at. Here's IBM. This is earnings related, but what I want to talk about is the $11 drop, almost 8%. And I'm going to have to go out five years on IBM and show you the low from 2017, which is right where we are. The next major low is down at 110. Holy, you know, holy mackerel, <laughs> you know, another 20 some dollars lower. That's huge. So right now, IBM is definitely bearish. If we take a look at Google and we're not going to need a five year chart here, I'm just going to go six months. Uh, Google did have a bounce yesterday, gave a little back today. It's just like the major averages. Um, we have the 20 day up here, the 50 day. Google has to get back above all these moving averages and then take out the previous highs to truly re energize the bullish trend. Now, maybe that's going to come with earnings later this month. We'll see. Here's Amazon. It's bouncing a little bit. They'll have earnings in a couple weeks. We need to get above um, the 20 day in red, the 50 day in orange, and then again, back up to new all time highs to re energize the bullish trend. Right now, this is just a bounce. So far, it's sort of a weak bounce at that. And here is Apple. Apple's going to be having earnings later this month as well. We need new all-time highs. Right now, we're holding support in the 215-ish area. And then we're going to have resistance up there around 230-something, 231. We need to get back above there. Maybe the earnings report could be that key metric. As of right now, a lot of the tech stocks are bouncing just with the cues, but they're not making a whole lot of headway just yet. So that's it, folks. I will see you in tomorrow's video. Wish you all the very best. Take care.